Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. Are you a new or sophisticated investor wanting to learn how to operate a successful syndication business? For life-changing training from the nation's leading syndication expert, my friend Vinny Chopra has the training you need. Text LEARN, L-E-A-R-N, to 474747. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Jeff Greenberg. Thanks for being on the show again, Jeff. Well, thank you, Whitney. I'm uh, happy to be here. Yeah, we're honored to have you back on the show and for you to be able to share from your experience. And, and uh, Jeff has over 40 years of experience in management, staff supervision, development, and training. He's the CEO of Synergetic Investment Group, LLC, also known as SIG. Since 2007, he has been investing in multifamily and student housing assets in emerging markets. He has been an investor in $30 million worth of multifamily projects consisting of over 800 units. SIG controls over 317 student housing beds in properties in Georgia, Arizona, and Ohio, and is currently under contract on two properties in Texas and Kentucky, totaling 292 units. SIG focuses on value add student housing, market rate multifamily, and senior living multifamily properties. Jeff has run two REI clubs over the past 13 years and is active on bigger pockets and other forums. Jeff, thank you again for, uh, you know, your time and, and providing your expertise to the listeners. And, you know, I want us to just jump right into just how, how you got started in the syndication business. And then, you know, let's talk a little bit about how others can get started and then, and we'll move from there into just partnerships and, and being just thinking uh, strategically about uh, partnerships and, and how others get started. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I got started, and I'm not saying that's the best way to get started or the only way to get started, but it is the way that I did, uh, that I happened to uh, go to a, a real estate event and meet with a, a guru and uh, went and uh, participated in his program for, for several years. Um, I don't know that that's, that's the way that it needs to be. I think that people need guidance. They need people that have more expertise than themselves. And it could be a one-on-one -on -one mentoring with somebody that uh, has gotten into the business and has become an expert in that business uh, and doing it that way. Um, but, you know, I learned it that way. I, I followed the program for quite some time and then was able to purchase my properties and get involved with, with people that way. You know, I, I, I hear it's a question I get weekly about different coaching programs and, and, you know, should somebody sign up and pay this money to this person or to this person or why or why not? And, and you know, needing, you know, finding a mentor, I feel like is a, is a must, you know, it's, it's non-negotiable. Like everybody needs a mentor in many aspects of, of life, I feel like, but, um, you know, as far as, you know, you found this mentor, do you, are there other people that, maybe signed up at the same time you did, but, but didn't, hasn't been as successful as you that, that you know of. And, and do you, do you, do you know why? Uh, ab absolutely. And I would say, you know, a, a very large percentage of people that go into those programs uh, from a seminar um, aren't successful, but I don't, I don't uh, blame the, uh, the gurus that are putting on the programs um, as much so as um, the the people lack lack the drive, and that I would say that typically is the big piece. You need to have that motivation. You need to have a strong why, and you also need someone guiding you. But having somebody guiding you um, that you know with, without your own internal motivation, uh, if they can't turn that on, if they can't get that moving, and you can't do it or you're not doing it, uh, it's not going to happen. The, and, and to answer your question, why am I successful and others, there's others that aren't? Many others that I could think of thousands of people that I had met over the years that aren't in the business anymore. And it's mainly, you know, that drive, uh, that why, 
you know, why am I doing this? Why I would rather be doing a whole bunch of other things, you know, attitude that if you don't get past that, um, you quit, you know, okay, this isn't important. It's not working. It's not what they said. And so they're out of it. Um, so that's, that's what it takes. And um, you talk to any one, I believe anyone that I've ever talked to that's been successful, unless they were, you know, extremely lucky, um, has gone through this where they started questioning why they were doing this. Why were they traveling all over the country um, and going to all these events? And, you know, it's, it's, you've got to have that internal drive uh, and, and finding the right mentor is also part of it. You know, I, I, had, I could relate a, a, a real short story. Um, I had a guy call me up and ask um, if I, uh, he, was, he lived about 20 minutes away from where my uh, meetup was. And he asked if I had anything closer to where he lived that he didn't want to drive that far. And I'm afraid I kind of lost it and I chewed him out. And I told him, look, if you can't drive 20 minutes to go to a meeting, don't bother getting into real estate. Don't bother opening a business. Don't bother doing anything because just stay home and watch TV because, you know, 20 minutes is nothing. You know, sometimes I'll drive two, three hours on a, on a work night um, to get to a meetup and somebody that couldn't um, drive 20 minutes to come to a meeting um, shouldn't, shouldn't bother. So it's, it's the drive. It, you really need to be motivated to do it and to see what's at the end of the rainbow. You know, it's a great business, fantastic business, but you, you have to work it. Yeah. You know, I heard uh, Terrell Fletcher speaking when he's a, a football player and he was, he related like the foot, uh, the, the, process of becoming successful you know as, as a professional athlete like that is that you have to love the process and he and he related it to being a, I think he's a boxer I can't remember exactly but it was like if the process means getting punched in the face but he knows after he's punched in the face 10 times he's going to be successful then he, he was just like let's get it over with <laughs> you know <laughs> but you have to be you have to be ready you have to love the process you know because you, you you know by doing that you're going to get somewhere you're going to be successful but but you got to be willing to be punched in the face a few times and, and to keep going, right? You got to be, have that drive like you're talking about. Absolutely. You have, you have to want it. And um, what, what, what would you say really gave you that drive, Jeff? What, you know, what made you really stick it out to it? You know, you've had some success now and, and numerous properties and, you know, kept you going through the learning process and to get to that first deal. Well, Initially, what it was, is I was in the middle of a divorce and I saw that uh, my retirement wasn't going to be sufficient, that I was uh, going to be losing my house in the divorce. And I knew that I had to do something. And that was, that was essentially the impetus that I wanted to be able to retire. And I had a bunch of grandkids and I wanted, my, uh, I wanted to be able to spend time and do things with my grandkids and not worry about, you know, where the money was coming from. So, I mean, that was, you know, I also leave in a legacy to my, to my family and to uh, be an asset to them and be able to help them uh, move along in, in their lives. So that was essentially mine. I mean, the divorce was probably the big thing. So essentially you just gave yourself no choice, right? I mean, you just, this is what I've got to do and, and for your retirement, for your family, and we're going to make it happen. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, and sometimes that's, that's what it takes. Um, Damien John um, has a great book that I really liked um, called The Power of Broke. And he profiles a bunch of people that have really no other choice. I mean, they could have, go, they could have gone to the dark side, but instead they um, – pushed themselves through and were successful in their businesses. And he's one of those people that grew up poor in bad uh, conditions and pushed himself to uh, be a success. So there's a lot of that in, in these stories that people pushed themselves and they were successful because of that. Are, are there other ways that you've seen people get into this business, you know, outside of paying, you know, a quote guru in quote, uh, you know, a lot of money, other ways that, you know, maybe you have friends that have gotten into this business and have been successful other ways. Well, you don't have to definitely, you know, um, pay for a mentor. Um, as you mentioned, um, we need mentors. We all need mentors. 
Um, but that doesn't mean you have to pay for them in money. There's a lot of things that you can do for a, a, a somebody that's successful. And that's not just in the real estate, but that's just about in any business. If you find a way to be of value to them and their business to add value, uh, you find someone from one of your real estate groups that is successful in doing fix and flips, if that's what you want to do, and you add value to their business that you can learn from them. The apprenticeship process is probably the best way to do things, uh, but you do need to add some kind of value. So, you know, could you elaborate on like maybe some good examples of way to add ways to add value? Or maybe if I, you know, if I didn't know you, Jeff, and I, and I was, and I was just trying to get started into this business, some ways that I could, uh, you know, I, I seen that you're successful and I thought, okay, you know, I'd really like to work with Jeff Greenberg. What would be some ways that someone could add value to somebody, you know, that's, you know, at your level of experience in a business like yours? Well, typically, uh, most of the people that I know uh, as syndicators, uh, there's two things that they always need. Uh, and they always need the deals. And that's, you know, appropriate deals, not just properties that are coming out on, you know, being sent uh, to them, but deals, uh, good deals, as well as equity. Uh, those seem to be the two big ones. So, or at least they are in, in my circles. If somebody could actually evaluate a deal and bring a deal to me in a, in a good market uh, that's been well thought out and well researched, uh, that's certainly a huge value. The other thing is, is bringing in equity. If people can introduce uh, a syndicator to new money, uh, new people that would like to you know, get their money into or out of the uh, stock market into real estate, you know, those are the, the two big ways that um, people have worked with me in the, in the past. No doubt. Everybody needs deal, deals and money, right, to make it happen. And that's, that's all part of the business. Yeah, you know, and, and I can see, you know, if I was just getting started and I didn't really understand, you know, how to do underwriting, I didn't understand, um, you know, how to talk to a potential investor, um, uh, you know, about – what syndication is or how, how they could invest in commercial real estate. If nothing else, I could, I could at least give you an introduction to uh, people who I thought might be an investor, right? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. You give the introductions and I have, I've had people that have given me introductions and we may uh, get on a, on a three-way call and I'll go through my process of getting to meet the person. And I do a little interview process of any potential investors and the, uh, the new, the new uh, investor um, could, could listen to that conversation and hear from that and, and, you know, maybe down in the future feel a little more comfortable with it. It is difficult um, at first, and I never thought that I would be raising funds for anything in my life. Uh, I've never been involved in sales, and that's not... Um, you know, it wasn't, wasn't my forte, but now it seems that that's um, what I do mostly. Mo I spend most of my time is creating and um, enforcing relationships and talking to people about real estate and deals. But I don't, I don't try to sell anything. I let people know what opportunities we have that we're providing. And that makes it easy. I just let people know, hey, you know, we've, we're, we're looking at this 200 unit property and uh, we're going to be bringing in investors, you know, we're real excited about it. And if, if they turn to me and say, oh, that's nice, you know, you know, the, we'll probably end up going to another topic. But if someone says, oh, well, that's interesting. How do you do that? Or what's, tell me a little more about this or, uh, you know, what kind of returns do you get, which is, you know, uh, you know, a, a topic that we have to kind of uh, hedge around. But, um, you know, I don't feel it's sales. I, if, I, if I have something that somebody really wants, uh, all I have to do is let them know that I have it and, you know, they'll pursue me. So I, I know, you know, getting started, it's hard to get out of our comfort zone, 
right? It's hard to put ourselves out there a little bit, do something different. Maybe it's even talking on a podcast or talking in front of a group, you know, a group of people or, um, you know, but, but it's ways to, or even speaking at a local REI club or something like that. What are some ways that you had to maybe overcome that, that fear of, you know, just getting out of your comfort zone when you were getting started? Oh, absolutely. That was terrifying. Um, I've always been a, a, an introvert growing up and people still look at me and say, no way. Um, but that's, that's the way it was in the beginning. Um, I would, I would be uh, afraid to talk to people. Um, you know, you'd get up and the first time that my uh, partner in, a, in one of the meetups said, Oh, okay, I want you to get up and open up the meeting. And I was, you know, my palms were sweating. I, my heart was beating away. You know, um, it, it, was, it was difficult. And I pushed myself. I pushed myself and I said, well, I'm going to do it. The other thing I did, I did go to the uh, Toastmasters. And one of the things, the first thing they asked me at Toastmasters was, why are you here? And I said, I want to push myself out of my comfort zone. I want to be uncomfortable. I want to continue to be uncomfortable until I'm not uncomfortable anymore. And when you push yourself out of your comfort zone, you grow. And next time you, next time your comfort zone somewhere else. So you push to the next level and you keep pushing to that level. And that is, that's how you grow. You, you don't grow by staying in your comfort, your comfort zone. You're just not going to grow. Was Toastmasters something that helped you to be able to be better at speaking? And uh, would you say that's a beneficial uh, I guess, group to be a part of? I think it absolutely is. Um, I didn't need it as much as a lot of the other people that were there because I had, I had been uh, in management and I had talked to large groups of people before. I thought maybe it could help out a little bit, and, and I feel, felt it did. I think my motivation really from the Toastmasters thing was more to, to network. <laughs> that yeah. was that was more of it. I was going to be every time I had a chance. I I threw real estate into my topics that I had to present, and I was. I think my goal was more so of getting investors than improving my public speaking. But there was a lot of people there that had a real difficult time with public speaking, and it was a good thing for them. So I do think it's a great program. Uh, for someone that's afraid to get up in front of people. I have to ask, did it help finding investors? No, never, <laughs> never, never got an investor out of that program, <laughs> you know, but it was, you know, I met nice people. Can you speak to like, you know, how important it is to build relationships when you're getting started and us kind of us talk about that a little bit and just how, maybe how you did that uh, and you know, maybe how that's changed from how you were, you know, building relationships and nurturing the relationships from the beginning to the way you are now. Yeah, it, it is extremely important uh, to build up relationships to to find other people that you can you can help or they can help you or they know somebody that they can refer you to. Um, it's just the 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 whole business of real estate is helping each other and being of some kind of service to each other. In the beginning, it was it was difficult. As I said, I was I was very quiet. I was a very introverted. And as I opened myself up more and more, you know, now I could go into these situations and talk to people and walk up to people and say, hey, you know, what are you doing? You know, or, you know, what kind of business are you in, or or what kind of if it's a real estate meetup, you know, what what are you doing in real estate, or what have you done? It's you never know who's going to be able to refer you to someone or something or or maybe they're going to invest with you or maybe they know somebody that's selling a property that you may be interested in it um it's it's a definitely a relationship business my first two deals that i got were from some some uh broker that a broker that i had met through loopnet of all places um and he happened to have been he was born in California, but he was living in Texas. And we got that relationships because we had the California connection. And every time I was in that part of Texas, I stayed with him and his family and we became friends and we still, we still text back and forth some and communicate some, even though we don't have a property involved anymore. But 
you know, it, it is the relationships. It's the relationships about getting the deals, as well as the relationships with investors. Um, on, on the current deal that we just closed on, um, on part of the raise, it was um, part of the funds were raised by people that I had met in different situations. And they were bringing in their, their network. So by me expanding to their network, I'm expanding my reach out. And that's extremely important um, when you're raising funds, when you're looking for deals, when you're you know, formulating relationships. It's, it's a team sport, isn't it? A team sport. It's definitely a team sport. I, I remember uh, reading um, a blog or something on, on Bigger Pockets where, where someone was talking about, well, I'm very introvert, introverted and I'm, you know, kind of afraid to talk to people and, um, you know, and I kind of, you know, went into it. I said, get over it. <laughs> Do whatever you need to get past that. If you need to go to Toastmasters, if you need to push yourself in front of groups to, to talk to people, you know, take a speech class at a college where you're forced to give presentations uh, in front of people, whatever it means, whatever it is, get past it. Uh, because that's, that's very difficult, unless you just want to be an underwriter or something, and you're just going to sit there and play with the spreadsheets and, and do some back office type of stuff. If you're going to be out there front facing, running your business, you better be able to talk to people, talk to vendors, talk to um, property managers, property inspectors, whatever. You need to be able to do that without, you know, being in fear of, of talking to people. What, what's been the, I guess, the, the best place that you've, you know, found those uh, just key relationships that's helped, you know, move your business to the next level and, and people you can help as well? Well, a lot of it started out with uh, the different meetups that I attend. Uh, the difficulty I found uh, with, the, I mean, in the beginning, it was great. I, I met a lot of people that were, you know, farther ahead than I was. Um, and, and I still go to some different boot camps where I meet up with some people that are, that are, you know, at my level or above my level. Uh, probably the most influential one is a mastermind that, that we've been involved with. And there are some extremely impressive people in that mastermind that are totally open to talking to, you know, anybody at whatever level. And they've, for the most part, they've been there, done that. And to ask them, say, hey, you know, what do you think of how I wrote my offering? You know, would you have changed anything? Um, what about the structure of my deal? What do you think about that? Um, you know, different things like that, that, you know, they could look things over and in a snap, you know, give you a comment on, on what their feelings are. Um, but most of the time nowadays, it seems like on the local stuff, you know, I may be the most experienced person in the room. So I, again, need to go places where I'm out of my comfort zone, where I'm standing up in front of a people with a, that are a lot more skilled than I have, uh, done a lot more than I am. And um, in, in our group, uh, we talk about, you know, what we can offer the group. And that was one of the more scary things to center, wait a minute how do I offer anything to this group? I mean, this is, you know, a phenomenal group of people. And so to try to come up with what I could offer them is, is probably one of the more difficult things is how I can help them in their business. But, you know, as you keep pushing yourself, you know, you, you keep finding things that, that will improve you. Yeah. And like you said, as you get out of your comfort zone, you, it causes you to grow. And then it, you have to, then you start to grow in other areas that you didn't even know were there. So initially maybe you were going to those local, you know, meetups and that caused you to grow. And then all of a sudden you realize that, okay, I got to find some other meetups or other groups like that mastermind, uh, you know, and that's caused you to grow even that much more and, and pushed you to another level. Oh, absolutely. And you know, you, you've, you've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. 
Jeff, uh, you know, just a, a couple questions before we have to go. Um, you know, we, we were talking about, you know, just how you got started and how other people can get started and just the importance of being driven, you know, being ready to, to just dig in and make it happen and then the importance of relationships and, and you know, what – you know, what, what would be the thing now that you're really focused on? You know, you're building these relationships, you're keeping those, those relationships going, you're continuing to do that. I, and I, well, I guess I wanted to ask you too, like, how do you manage to make time to continue nurturing all these important relationships? Well, with a lot of the different stuff that I'm doing, I have uh, other people, I have other people doing the things that don't need my attention. I have other people that are looking for the deals for the most part, um, are underwriting the deals. Uh, I have a team that we've been um, going out and doing due diligence with, or, or that's something that we've actually been delegating out to property management companies where we've been contracting with them to do some of that. So that reduces the, uh, the duties that I have. Uh, I have been working to get my team to do more of the fundraising because that seems to be the one that uh, a lot of people are more resistant to, that they find more difficult and are more uncomfortable with. So I try to offload as much as I can and you know, teach the rest of the team to do it. Um, I think it was um, Chris Clothier that I heard talk at uh, Joe Fairless's uh, conference two years ago. It wasn't, I think it was his first one. And one of the things that Chris said was the CEO's responsibility is to train his employees to replace him. And I thought, yeah, that's right. I want to train them so they can do the jobs that I don't need to do. And that means I could be doing other things to develop the company and to, you know, reach out farther, but it's, training people, getting people that could replace the jobs that I'm doing. And so that's, you know, one of the, one of the things that I try to do now and uh, uh, right now it's, it's mainly the fundraising um, aspect of it, but my team does most of the other stuff. Jeff, tell us the, the one thing that's contributed to your success. Persistence. Persistence. <laughs> Just, you know, um, just, you know, like you're saying, get punched in the face and go on, go on again and, and uh, keep going. Uh, what is uh, Kiyosaki, what he said, uh, you know, uh, fail quickly so you can succeed. <laughs> you know, um, you, nobody, nobody that's ever been a success, uh, you know, has gone. Nobody that I know of has never had a failure or had uh, disappointments. And we, we all have that. You need to get past those. And, you know, can't, can't curl up into a ball and say, what was me? You know, we just, we just keep going on and keep pushing. Uh, but persistence and determination that we're going to succeed. We just have to keep doing it. Nice. And, and before we have to go, tell us how you like to give back. I mean, I, I do a lot of uh, work with people. Um, I mean, I do do some coaching on, on a fee basis, but I also do, you know, my, the different clubs that I go to. Um, I, I go to many different uh, meetups where I get in front of people and, and talk. Uh, I was at a meeting last night that uh, we were sharing. There's probably two or three of us that had experience that were sharing with a whole bunch of newbies and helping them understand the business. Um, you know, so I, I do help people if people have um, have questions. I'm totally open to that, and that's that's typically where I help people out is uh, you know giving them uh, giving back to the to the uh, community. Nice. Right, so Jeff, I, I really appreciate your time and expertise and sharing how you got started and uh, and just building these relationships that have been so important to growing your business. Tell the listeners you know how they can get in touch with you and how they can learn more about your business. Well, you can go to my website, which is uh, www.synergeticig.com, and that's S-Y-N-E-R-G-E-T-I-C-I-G.com, or reach out to me at Jeff at Synergetic IG, same spelling. Um, I'm also on Bigger Pockets. You can contact me through there. Um, I'm 
on there a lot. And I guess those are probably the best ways to get a hold of me. And if you want to know more about Jeff's story, you want to hear more about his current business and, and, uh, and some more about student housing possibly as well, go to show WS38. He was, he was uh, interviewed on show WS38, and we talked a lot more about his business and, and about student housing and some other things. And I, I would encourage you to go back and listen to him there. I appreciate you being with us today as a listener, and I hope you'll be with us every day as we interview experts and go to LifeBridge Capital and you can connect with me and don't forget the Facebook group, the real estate syndication show. And we will talk to each of you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the real estate syndication show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.